he's really proven to be a heck of a football player. He's smart. He's instinctive. He's he is exactly what you'd want out of a linebacker in terms of instinct, speed, feel. And he's always where he's supposed to be. He's a playmaker. Plugging the hole left at Mike linebacker with the departure of Tremaine Edmonds will not be easy. Luckily, they'll have all pro linebacker Matt Milano playing alongside whoever they decide to plug into the middle linebacker position. Milano just finished his sixth season with the Buffalo Bills. And as you heard, he has the respect of people around the league. The Boston College alum finished the 2022 season with 87 solo tackles, 32 assisted tackles, four and a half sacks, two fumbles forced, six pass breakups, and three interceptions, one of which he took to the house. His play has landed him a two-year extension by the Bills, but with the departure of his longtime running mate Tremaine Edmonds, many fans are wondering what the plans are at linebacker. For several years, Milano was a creator of chaos. Sure, he would fire his gun and miss some tackles from time to time, but he is a disruptor. And a lot of the chaos he created landed into the 83-inch wingspan of Tremaine Edmonds. But I don't think fans realize how often Milano was the stacked linebacker inside, a quasi-Mike, which shouldn't change going forward, and in many ways should minimize the loss. Opposing offenses use their personnel and formations to put Milano in the box. A lot of times, stacked right over the A-gap. And most fans would probably think that the six-foot linebacker who plays in the 230-pound range wouldn't be able to hack it. But that simply isn't true. If kept clean, Milano can make as many plays at or behind the line of scrimmage as anyone in the league. In fact, Milano finished third last season in tackles for loss with 12. And as you'll see in a large portion of these plays, Milano is essentially playing more of a Mike linebacker role. And that's by design. The coaches have built the defense that way. Last season, we routinely saw him flash across the screen to make TFLs thanks to his film study. There were even times last season where we could see Milano alerting his teammates to formational tendencies or straight up calling out plays. And as soon as the ball was snapped, he would trigger and create a tackle for loss. Like this play against the Ravens. Everyone in the league knows that the Ravens love to have their 300 plus pound fullback, Patrick Ricard, lead plays in the run game. Milano alerts the defense to Ricard's alignment, and once the ball is snapped, Milano goes to work. He comes downhill while working laterally down the line of scrimmage. Gets his eyes in the first gap of daylight, but the running back continues wide. Milano finds the next possible entry point for the running back before the back does. His processing and athleticism allowed him to stay ahead of the offensive lineman, to stay clean, and to make the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. How about this play against the Packers? As the tight end comes back across the formation to test the Bills' alignment, Milano knows that they are trying to get running back A.J. Dillon on the boundary. As the ball is snapped, Milano scrapes and leverages the ball down the line of scrimmage from his stacked position inside. He avoids the lineman and does whatever it takes to bring down the bruising tailback. Most of you will remember this big stop on Nick Chubb from Week 11. Quarterback Jacoby Brissett changed the play call and identified safety Jordan Poyer as the Mike. This typically is done on run plays to let the offensive line know who they are working to. Milano picked up on the audible and pointed out that the Browns are likely running to the weak side bubble. That's a large gap between Daquan Jones and Shaq Lawson, which is covered up by Poyer, a safety. The Browns think they have an advantage. On the snap, Milano fires his gun, and good thing he did, because if he isn't aggressive and playing on the Brown side of the line of scrimmage, there's a good chance right guard Wyatt Teller washes him down the line of scrimmage. Chubb would then have a cutback lane for a big gain, and I mean big. Milano uses his athleticism in the box to put on his free style of play that McDermott loves. Part doing his 111th, part instincts. He's not just confined to the scheme or his assignment. He trusts what he sees, he trusts his eyes. Thanks to that, Milano is able to periodically stack blockers, but quickly disengage as to not get swallowed up. He routinely leads with his eyes over his hands to stack and disengage, or just lets his eyes and feet take him to the ball. His agility in confined spaces is cat-like quick, and he uses it to avoid blockers. You can see him routinely darting in and out of traffic, working around the hog mollies who are not on his athletic level. So teams will try to bait him to come downhill, to fill when he's stacked over the A-gaps, but then run concepts out to the boundary. But they forget how freaking quickly he can scrape down the line of scrimmage with running backs, perfectly leveraging the ball horizontally until he senses it's time to pounce. 
in short yardage situations like third and fourth and short, or in the red zone, especially the low red zone, when offenses bring in heavy packages, Milano would typically be aligned on the perimeter of the formation, essentially playing an off-the-ball Sam linebacker role, which would cause many offenses to think that he wouldn't be able to set the edge or hold it down. Boy, were they wrong. Milano sliced through the gaps in these situations to make some big plays on money downs. You would also see his ability to stack and keep an offensive tackle or tight end at arm's length, disengage, and track down the ball. His athleticism and processing are just too much to handle, even for some of the most talented tackles and tight ends. Look at how he leads with his hands, specifically his inside hand. He gets leverage with his hand and then positional leverage outside. He kept his outside hand free and the outer half of his body outside to set the edge. He won the edge, so the running back was forced to cut up inside, and that's when Milano disengaged and made the tackle. Talk about mental toughness. He was hands down the guy that would make a big play when the Bills needed one in those big moments. But the part of his game that has been overshadowed because he is such a disruptive force versus the run and an eraser in coverage is his ability to affect the quarterback as a pass rusher. In 2022, Milano was second to Demario Davis in Pro Football Focus's pass rush productivity rating. He registered a PRP of 22.7, thanks to his 24 QB pressures, which includes four and a half sacks. Last season, Milano rushed the passer 9.6% of his snaps and racked up a win rate of 32.8%, which was tops in the league among linebackers with 20% of the snaps. But that percentage of rushes was down big from 2021. In 2021, defensive coordinator Leslie Frazier rushed Milano 14.1% of his snaps. I do believe that change had a lot to do with the Bills acquiring Von Miller. But what I found interesting is in what situations they sent Milano to hunt the quarterback. In 2021, Milano rushed the passer 5.5% on first down, 14.1% on second down, and a whopping 24.4% of the time on third down. Well, in 2022, things were slightly different. On first down, he rushed the passer 6.2% of the time, 14% on second down, and 8.5% on third down. So overall, his rush percentage was down, but the major drop was on third down. The Bills didn't have to lean on him to create pressure, which allowed him to be utilized in coverage and spirals much more which is why he had an all-pro season. The biggest wrinkle we saw on defense this season was the Bills' version of Odd Mirror. Odd Mirror is a college staple that defensive coordinators use against mobile quarterbacks. Typically, the defense will only rush three defenders and appoint one defender as a spy, but an aggressive spy. The strategy is to still play with seven in coverage on the back end, typically in man coverage, with the pass rushers attempting to flush the quarterback out of the pocket. And as soon as a quarterback escapes, the spy attacks. This role was almost built for Milano. We saw the Bills bust this out against the Chiefs in week six, typically on third downs. It was a good strategy against the ever-elusive Patrick Mahomes, Justin Fields, and even Joe Burrow. Because the tactic allowed the three rushers to rush without having to worry about maintaining the pass rush lane integrity. They could pin their ears back and attack, knowing that if the quarterbacks found a lane to escape, Milano would be there to suffocate the quarterback. The Bills designed rushes to attack the quarterback spot in the pocket to force him off said spot and get him running, almost funneling him to Milano or making a bad decision like we saw to end the game. The Bills send Von Miller, Ed Oliver, and Gregory Rousseau after Mahomes with Milano as the spy. The alignment by Milano forces the right guard, Trey Smith, and center Creed Humphrey to account for Milano and their protections. This is important because as the ball is snapped, Miller attacks with speed upfield. So Smith is a tad late to help once Milano isn't a true threat to rush. That opens up an inside lane, the lane that Miller planned on attacking. Mahomes was not comfortable standing on the spot because of the double-handed swipe by Miller and the looping edge rusher Rousseau, so he went to scramble drill mode. But Milano was just waiting. He rushed Mahomes, but the QB knew what Milano was doing. So as soon as Milano committed to him, he thought he had a crosser wide open over the middle. And it looks like he does, but the Bills were playing a combo coverage with man coverage on one side and zone coverage on the other. And Mahomes never saw the corner, Taron Johnson squatting, just waiting for Mahomes to commit to that throw. Just fantastic scheming by Leslie Frazier 
to use Milano as a spy to contain and bait Mahomes into this interception to end the game. If he isn't spying quarterbacks, you know he's likely playing that matchup linebacker role, making plays in zone or in man coverage. Over the last two seasons, Milano has been targeted in coverage the fourth most. Quarterbacks have gone at Milano 158 times. What has come of it? The second most forced incompletions with 16, the second lowest passer rating allowed at 79.5, and the fourth lowest completion percentage when targeted at 68.3%. His skill set matches up well with tight ends because he can get into their body and run with them. But he can also stay with running backs when they leak out of the backfield. In 2022, opposing quarterbacks attacked Milano 5% less than in 2021. When in man coverage, he was the primary defender only 6.4% of the plays. He got his hand on two of the passing attempts that he was targeted in man coverage and surrendered three completions for a whopping seven yards. But we all know the Bills are a zone-heavy team. According to PFF, the Bills were in zone over 70% of the defensive snaps last season. And that's where Milano made most of his plays on the ball in the passing game. His playmaking ability flashes in every coverage the Bills play. As a flats or hook to curl defender in cover three, as a wall defender in cover two, and even in match coverages when he is asked to carry receivers down the seam. Milano always rises to the challenge. His three interceptions last season tied his career high. And if you watch him in real time, you may not think they're all that impressive. But what's important to note are his assignments and instincts put him in position to make those plays. Against the Patriots, the Bills are in their quarters coverage, with Milano backpedaling deep down the seam. The depth and angle he took towards his end zone made the throw by the quarterback to the route behind Milano that much more difficult. The QB had to throw it up and over Milano, but in front of safety, Jordan Poyer. The ball sails, Hull gets a piece of it, and Milano tracks it for the interception in his end zone. Against the Packers, Rodgers opens as if he is going to throw the diagonal route to the tight end. So Milano screams to the flats. But as Rodgers starts his delivery, Milano recognizes that he is attempting to hit the curl, so he pulls up. Defensive tackle Tim Settle gets a mitt on the ball, and Milano is within striking distance to make the diving interception. And finally, his pick six against the Titans. The Bills are once again in their quarters coverage, specifically their trap call. This is a four over three. So four defenders are matching the route distribution of the three receivers. Milano is over the number two receiver, but is asked to read the route of the number three. If that receiver breaks inside or goes vertical, he's to continue to gain depth. But if the number three runs an out route, which will out leverage Tremaine Edmonds, Milano is supposed to trap it or jump it and pass his man to the corner or safety. Milano keys Ryan Tannehill's drop. As soon as he hits that back foot, Milano knows the quick game is coming and he spots the number three running the out route. So he drives on it, steps in front of the stick route, catches the ball and takes it to the house. Another example of Milano doing his 111th and playing with instincts, which led to a big play for the Bills defense. Milano deservedly became an all-pro last season thanks to being a true matchup linebacker. A defender that was disruptive against the run, a nuisance to opposing quarterbacks as a pass rusher, and by making splash plays in the passing game. While 2022 was his best season, I wholeheartedly believe that 2023 may be another record-setting year for Milano. The team will lean on him now more than ever with Edmonds in Chicago, and I believe he'll be up to the task.